beautiful Zion that dwelleth with the daughter of Babylon. For so thus saith Yahweh of hosts, and for the glory hath he sent me unto the nations which spoiled you. For he that toucheth you toucheth the apple of his eye. Shalom, brothers and sisters. I'm Brother Jonas, and the title of this video is Jeremiah chapter 30 and God's prophetic word. In Jeremiah chapter 30, Israel is being given prophetic words of restoration from the destructions that it is facing from Babylon of old. And it would be a restoration from mystery Babylon the Great in our time. The Israelites didn't know that God was talking about 2,500 years into the future. That's probably a good thing. If they had realized their ultimate salvation would not come for 2,500 years in the waiting, it would have been very heartbreaking for them. These prophetic words shows the love that the Most High have for his people Israel. That's you and me, brothers and sisters, and not the nations. The nations are not his children. And the Most High, contrary to Christianity rumors, the Most High does not love the nations. He loves Israel. Israel is his beloved. Christianity will not tell people the truth about who God loves and who he's going to drop the mic on. And that will be our enemies. I will show you nine clues that Jeremiah chapter 30 is talking about a future time in our time. Let's see what this God of love says to Israel through the mouth of the prophet Jeremiah. Jeremiah 30 verse 1. The word that came to Jeremiah from Yahweh, saying, Thus speaketh Yahweh, God of Israel, saying, Write thee all the words that I have spoken unto thee in a book. The Most High tells Jeremiah to write all the words that I have spoken to you in a book. Now, some people believe that the so-called white man, who is the red man, Edom, according to the Bible, they believe he wrote the Bible. That is simply not true. The Bible condemns the so-called white man, who is the red man that is Edom, or the descendants of Esau. If he wrote the Bible, he would have taken all the things out of it that goes against him and his wicked agenda. And believe me when I tell you, there is a lot in the Bible that goes against Esau's descendants, who is Edom. The Bible is by inspiration to the prophets. 2 Timothy 3, verse 16. All scripture is given by inspiration of the Most High and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. But why? Verse 17. That the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. So, we might be perfect, fully equipped to do all good works of righteousness. So, no, the so-called white man, who is the red man Edom, according to the Bible, did not write the Bible. That's simply not true. We give him too much credit for the righteous things and not enough credit for the wicked things he does. Now, let's go back to Jeremiah 30, verse 3. For lo, the days come, saith Yahweh, that I will bring again the captivity of my people Israel and Judah. That's northern kingdom Israel and southern kingdom Judah. They were divided, remember. Saith Yahweh, and I will cause them to return to the land that I gave to their fathers, and they shall possess it. The Most High said, the days come, or the time will come saith Yahweh, that I will bring again the captivity of my people Israel and Judah, or I will bring Israel and Judah out of slavery. 
physical slavery and mental slavery and spiritual slavery, saith Yahweh, and I will cause them to return to the land that I gave their fathers, and they will possess it. To the ears of the Israelites back then, it sounds like this will happen in their time because the Most High told them that they will return to Israel after 70 years were completed in Babylon. You'll find that in Jeremiah 25, verse 11 and 12, and Jeremiah 29, verse 10. But the Most High was actually talking about 2,500 years into the future in our time here in chapter 30. And the scriptures will prove this statement. Verse 4, and these are the words that Yahweh spake concerning Israel and concerning Judah. For thus saith Yahweh, we have heard a voice of trembling, of fear, and not of peace. Ask ye now, and see whether a man doth travail with child. Wherefore do I see every man with his hands on his loins, as a woman in travail, and all faces are turned into paleness. The voices of Israel's men are trembling from fear and not of good things. The Most High said, does a man have childbirth pains? No, men do not have childbirth pains. So why then do I see every man with his hands on his groin as a woman with childbirth pains? And all the faces are turned into paleness, which is fear. Paleness has nothing to do with the color of someone's skin. It has to do with a fearful appearance. Something is causing this distress, but what could it be? Verse seven, alas, for that day is great, so that none is like it. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble, but he shall be saved out of it. Now, here's the first clue. We're going to count them off as we go. Here is the first clue to show you that the Most High is talking about our time. He said, for that day is great, so great that there is none like it. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble, but he will be saved out of it. Yes, Jacob had troubles back then going into old Babylon, but you'll see it's trouble in our time. It's talking about the troubles in our time. The troubles we have right now and the troubles we're going to have very shortly in a year or two. Verse 8. For it shall come to pass in that day, talking about the present time, saith ye how of hosts that I will break his yoke from off thy neck and will burst thy bonds and strangers shall no more serve themselves of him. Now, here is the second clue to show you that the Most High is talking about our time. He said, it will come to pass in that day, saith Yahweh of hosts, that I will break his yoke, Edom's yoke from off our neck, and will burst your bonds, and strangers will no more serve themselves of Israel. Israel did not have yokes on their necks in those times. A yoke is referred to also as a form of control. We had yokes of iron on our neck in these modern times of the past 400 years. Today, we don't have physical yokes on our necks, but there is a mental yoke, a spiritual yoke, a social yoke, and an economic yoke that is on our necks. That is keeping us on the bottom of all nations. This is the yoke the Most High will break. Verse 9. But they shall serve Yahweh their God and David their king, whom I will raise up unto them. Now, here is the third clue to show you that the Most High is talking about our time. He said, they, or Israel, will serve Yahweh their God and David their king, whom I will raise up to them. Israel will serve their God, not the God of everybody in the world. He's not the God of everybody in the world, folks. The 
despite what Christianity says. He's the God of Israel. And David, their king, this isn't talking about King David of old. It's talking about the descendant of David, Christ. And the Most High will raise him up for us. Was Christ raised up at the time of Jeremiah? No. So it's not talking about the time of Jeremiah. Christ would be raised up 500 years later to save Israel from their sins. A future time seen 500 years later from the time of Jeremiah. Verse 10. Therefore fear thou not, O my servant Jacob, saith Yahweh. Neither be dismayed, O Israel, for lo, I will save thee from afar and thy seed from the land of their captivity. And Jacob shall return and shall be in rest and be quiet and none shall make him afraid. Now, here is the fourth clue to show you that the Most High is talking about our time. He said, Therefore, don't you fear, O my servant Jacob, saith Yahweh, neither be dismayed, O Israel, because I will save you from far away, and your seed or your descendants from the land of their captivity, or where they are living, and Jacob will return, and will be at rest, and be quiet, and no people or nation will make him afraid. When the Israelites returned from Babylon, were they at rest? No. They had troubles restoring the city. And later came the Greeks, and they had troubles. And then later came the Romans, and they had troubles. And all throughout history, from the Romans up until this very day, there are troubles. Remember the Most High said, and none will make Israel afraid? So, this lets you know that this is talking about a future time not yet seen. Because it's not going to be until Christ's return and then we go back to our homeland that none of the nations are going to make us afraid. Verse 11. For I am with thee, saith Yahweh, to save thee, though I make a full end of all nations whether I have scattered thee, yet will I not make a full end of thee, but I will correct thee in measure and would not leave thee altogether unpunished. Now here is the fifth clue to show you that the Most High is talking about our time. He said, For I am with you, saith Yahweh, to save you, though I make a full end of all nations where I have scattered you, and Israelites are scattered all over the world. So, have all the nations been brought down? Have the Most High made an end to all the nations? No. A future time not yet seen. This is what this is. A future time not yet seen. So it's talking about our period of time. A year or two down the road. Verse 12. For thus saith Yahweh, Thy bruise is incurable and thy wound is grievous. The children receive punishment from their heavenly father, and he said, Your bruise is incurable, and your wound is grievous. Verse 13. There is none to plead thy cause, that thou mayest be bound up. Thou hast no healing medicines. There is no one to plead our cause, that we may be bound up. We have no healing medicines. There is no one to help us out of our current situation. Verse 14, all thy lovers have forgotten thee. They seek thee not, for I have wounded thee with the wound of an enemy, with the chastisement of a cruel one, for the multitude of thy iniquity, because thy sins were increased. Once the mighty Israelites fell from grace, back in time past, during the time of Jeremiah, the very nations we used to turn to kicked us to the curb. The Most High called them our lovers. God devastated Israel. 
the children he loves as a punishment. God devastated us. Why? Because of the multitude of our sins had increased in Israel, even as they are today. Nothing new under the sun. The Israelites today have increased their sins against the Most High. We are wretched as a people. Just look at YouTube. Go to the stores. Look around you at our people, how they dress, how they act. We are ratchet. So what was then is also now. But in this situation, there ain't going to be a captivity to go into. This is our final captivity. In this situation, a lot of our people are going to get killed along with the nations. Verse 15. Why criest thou for thy affliction? Thy sorrow is incurable for the multitude of thine iniquity, because thy sins were increased. I have done these things unto thee. God said, Why are you crying about what is happening to you? Your sins increased and are great, and that is why I have done these things to you. A good old-fashioned whooping from God to Israel on a God level. You know how when you, you, you did something wrong as a kid, you got a beating. One of your parents would later comfort you with a few words. Well, here comes those words of comfort from our Heavenly Father. Jeremiah 30, verse 16. Therefore, all they that devour thee shall be devoured, and all thy adversaries, every one of them, shall go into captivity. And they that spoil thee shall be a spoil. And all that prey upon thee will I give for a prey. Now, here is the sixth clue to show you that God is talking about our time. He said, all those nations that destroyed us will be destroyed. And all of our adversaries, every last one of them, will go into captivity or slavery or servitude. Pick the word that makes you feel good. And those nations that spoiled us will be a spoil for us. That's all of the original 17 nations. And all that preyed on us, God will give them to us for a prey. This is a future time. This is not yet seen. These things did not happen during the time of Jeremiah and has not happened yet. A year or two down the road, these things are going to be reality. Verse 17. For I will restore health unto thee, and I will heal thee of thy wounds, saith Yahweh, because they call thee an outcast, saying, This is Zion, who no man seeketh after. Now, here is the seventh clue to show you that God is talking about our time. He said, I will restore health to us. And I will heal us. He said, I will restore health to you. And I will heal you of your wounds, saith Yahweh. Because they called us Israel, an outcast, saying, this is Zion that nobody wants or nobody seeks after. We were like trash then, just like we're like trash to the nations today. All the nations look down on us. We're not desirable to them. But you have to wake up and see these things. Christianity is lying to you. Our health has been restored by the blood of Christ 500 years after Jeremiah. But our wounds, our wounds are not yet healed. Because we're still in captivity, whether you believe it or not. Just because we don't have chains around us or yokes on our necks, or whips being cracked on our backs, we're still in captivity, mentally, spiritually, economically, and socially. So this is talking about a future time not yet seen. Verse 18, Thus saith Yahweh, Behold, I will bring again the captivity of Jacob's tents, meaning he's going to bring us out of captivity, and have mercy on his dwelling places, and the city shall be builded upon her own heap, and the palace shall remain after the manner thereof. Jerusalem will be built 
after Jerusalem is destroyed when Christ returns. Verse 19, And out of them shall proceed thanksgiving, and the voice of them that make merry, and I will multiply them, and they shall not be few. I will also glorify them, and they shall not be small. After Christ's return, our nation will be happy and will multiply from the physical Israelites that are brought back from the nations, and God will glorify them or set them above the other nations. Verse 20, Their children also shall be as aforetime, and their congregation shall be established before me, and I will punish all that oppress them. If any of the nations during the time after Christ's return try to oppress Israel at that future time that's not yet happened, God will punish them and he will use his battle axe, which is the 144,000 kings, to go throughout the world to punish those nations that try to oppress Israel. Verse 21, And their nobles shall be of themselves, and their governor shall proceed from the midst of them, and I will cause him to draw near, and he shall approach unto me. For who is this that engage his heart to approach unto me, saith Yahweh? Now, here is the eighth clue to show you that God is talking about our time. He said Israel's nobles will be of Israel, and Israel governor will proceed from the middle of the Israelites, and he will cause Israel to draw near, and Israel will approach God. For who is this that set his mind to approach God, saith Yahweh? Israel in Jeremiah's time, the time of Christ, and now have nobles that are not of Israel and have governors that are not from the Israelites. We always in the past, after we went into captivity and, and dealt with um, the Persians and dealt with the Greeks, the Romans, all the way up until now, we've always had people from other nations as our nobles, those that were above us, ruling over us. So you see, this is a future time not yet seen because when Christ returns, we're going to have nobles that come from us. We're going to have governors that come from us. We're going to be on top ruling the world and we're not going to be mixed in with these other nations with how we rule this world. Verse 22, and ye shall be my people and I will be your God and Israel will be my people. Not everybody in the world is Yahweh's people, and Yahweh will be our God, Israel's God. Our God is not everybody's God in the world. Christianity got you all messed up. Verse 23 Behold, the whirlwind of Yahweh goeth forth with fury, a continuing whirlwind. It shall fall with pain upon the head of the wicked. The wrath of God goes forth with fury, a continuing wrath. It will fall with pain on the head of the wicked, the wicked of the nations and the wicked of Israel that follow the nations. If our people don't wake up and stop dressing stupid, and I'm talking about the women, and stop putting on these tight fitting, revealing clothes with these long fake eyelashes looking like an ostrich with all that fake hair money they throwing away walking around prancing and acting a nut if they don't stop they're going to burn with the nations simple as that verse 24 the fierce anger of Yahweh shall not return until he have done it and until he have performed the intents of his heart in the latter days, ye shall consider it. Now, here is the ninth clue to show you that God is talking about our time. He said the fierce anger of Yahweh will not stop until 
his prophecies are complete. And until he have performed the intents of his mind against the nations, and in the latter days, you, Israel, will consider it. And we are in the latter days now. And we are considering it. The fierce anger of Yahweh is starting. His prophecies are in motion. A lot of people don't realize it. God's prophecies of the last days are in motion. And we are in these latter days considering all that our Heavenly Father, Yahweh, told our brother Jeremiah to tell us. And still these prophecies are a future time a few short years ahead, not yet seen. Peace to you, Israel. Tick tock.